back boys and girls for a special edition of the michael deacon program joining me in a moment the freight train jim fetzer has returned boys and girls he is a prolific writer and author jim has published numerous books and articles promoting various interesting theories many of which you are quite familiar with and of course jim has faced harsh criticism and controversy over some of the things that he believes. It's been a long time, boys and girls, and let's bring him right on in. Hey, 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 Michael, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, good, good. Long time, way too long. Way too long, Jim, and welcome back to the program. It's always a honor and pleasure to have you on here. And yes, uh, Jim, this has been a long time in the making, and I'm glad we finally have I made the connection here and there's so much to uh, talk about and I wanted to jump right on in with you and it seems like one of the most recent things that have caught your attention and the attention of the nation is the influx that we're seeing at the border. Absolutely Michael, yes, 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 that's the right place to go. I, uh, I've been giving this a lot of thought and putting some data points together and I'm sorry to say we're at DEFCON 1. This is not merely a figurative invasion of millions, and I, I, already more than six have come across the border since Biden went into office. The aspiration, I think, is to run it up to as many as 100 million. It's not just a displacement theory that's going on. Let me put together what I think is really taking place, which is you have an an army crossing the border without arms, but the administration has been stockpiling arms for them. And in order to make sure they have communication and coordination, they're giving them smartphones under the guise of being, you know, illegals who are getting assistance from, of all places, the Department of Homeland Security. So I think the situation is imminent and it could not be more serious. Let me review the, the, the pieces that I put together in such a fashion that causes me great alarm. Invasion begins. Video reportedly shows illegal aliens opening DHS back with smartphones. Some court dates not until 2035. Title 42, Trump era pandemic restrictions officially came to an end on Thursday. Video and images from the border are disturbing. It turns out illegals are opening packets from DHS that include government-issued smartphones and directions to appear at a court date set many years in the future. In other words, this is all deliberate smokescreen to make the American people think they're handling this in incursion responsibly when actually they're promoting it on a massive scale and for utterly treasonous ends, Michael. There's just no other way to describe it. 
You got uh, Tyler Hansen tweeting, Brownsville, Texas. Migrants open their DHS packet, use their government-issued cell phones after being processed and received court dates. Some migrants have shown me their court dates are set as far as 2027. Now, obviously, anyone who's in the country from 2023 for four years or more is going to have their own roots. They're going to have disappeared into the woodwork. They're going to be virtually inaccessible. After a brief initial processing, migrants are given papers for a notice to appear. Most dates I've seen are dated in 2027, four years from now. Some are given new phones and a bus ticket to a state where they've been provided an address or a sponsor or family already here in the country. But what's crucial is they're giving them these smartphones. They're going to enable the government to, to make contact with them, and I'm convinced to direct those that are going to be parties to this What's well, going to be actual warfare, Michael? I cannot emphasize enough what's going on here. I'm a former Marine Corps officer. I'm a retired professor of philosophy. I'm a student of conspiracies on which I publish extensively, and I'm telling you the signs are present as to what's taking place. Many have seen the footage of these massive numbers crossing the border and observed how many of them are young, physically fit, military age. I think that's exactly what's going on. They're bringing the, the army across the border without weapons to not cause any alarm. But get this, non-law enforcement agencies like IRS and EPA spend billions on guns and ammo. Federal agencies such as the IRS and the Environmental Protection Agency have spent nearly $4 billion in taxpayer funds on guns, ammunition, and other military-style equipment. Since 2006, 76 rank-and-file agencies outside traditional law enforcement or the Department of Defense have spent $3.7 billion on guns, ammo, and military-style equipment, according to the watchdog group, open the books. The agencies include the National Institutes of Health, NASA, the EPA, the Small Business Administration, among others, that historically have played little to no role in law enforcement at all. What the hell do they need this massive number, this amount of weapons? The record comes that the Biden admin is working to hire 87 new IRS employees, raising alarms because they've included in their requirements to be willing to use lethal force. Now, that's most certainly something taxpayers are not accustomed to, lethal force from the IRS. What in God's name is going on there? Right. And what would the NIH or NASA or the EPA, or the Small Business Administration need to stock up on billions worth of equipment. Let me add a further element to this, Michael. We've got J.D. Vance, he's a representative from Ohio. We cannot, as a country, absorb 10 million people and still provide high-quality housing to the rest of the country. I, here he is in the, in the Senate. Yeah, well, actually, is Vance? Let's see. He's a, yeah, I correct. He's a yeah, he's a senator, Republican Ohio Senator J. V. Vance in in the Senate. I want to focus on one of the under discussed components of the housing crisis in our country today, and that is its connection to mass illegal immigration. And just to sort of put a fine point and explain where I'm coming from and why I'm raising this issue. I think a lot of our friends on the other side of the aisle who convince themselves that lax immigration is somehow a compassionate thing to do, said Senator Vance. We cannot, as a country, absorb 10 million people and still provide high-quality housing to the rest of our citizens. The math doesn't work. The numbers don't make sense. The increase in housing prices and rents is clear for all to see. Here's a tweet from Joni Job at the rate of 10,000 per day. It'll take only 10 days to reach my city population of 102,000. We already have homeless people galore. America's in the midst of a housing shortage. Affordable housing options are shrinking. There's an ongoing spike in housing costs. So what in the hell is taking place? I put up on Twitter... Last night, when it all came together for me, huge, 
why billions on armed by non-law enforcement agencies? Now it makes sense. Army crossing border plus caches of arms equal U.S. war. This is an invasion. Biden orchestrated it. The nation is under attack. They will take our homes and kill us. It is happening now. Michael, I know this sounds extraordinary, but I'm telling you, this is what happens. I'm also very, very concerned that a lot of those br they're bringing in from these various countries have already been trained by the U.S. military. For example, at the School of the Americas, we have a book published by Leslie Gill already in 2004, talking about the role of the School of Americas in military training of political violence in Latin and South America. Located at Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia, the School of the Americans is a U.S. Army Center, trained more than 60,000 soldiers and police, mostly from Latin America, in counterinsurgency and combat-related skills since it was founded in 1946. So widely documented is the participation of the school's graduates in torture, murder, and political repression throughout Latin America. Then in 2001, the school officially changed its name to the Western Hemisphere Institute of Security Cooperation. Leslie Gill goes behind the facade and presents a comprehensive uh, portrait of the School of the Americas. Based on her unprecedented level of access, she describes the school's mission and training method, reveals how student alumni and officers perceive themselves in relation to the dirty wars that have raged across Latin America. Assessing the school's role in U.S. empire building, she shows how Latin America's brightest and most ambitious military officers are indoctrinated into a stark good versus evil worldview. And we all know a whole lot about it. Meanwhile, a federal judge has made clear who is to blame for the border crisis, halts Biden's immigrant parole program. A federal judge late Thursday temporarily halted the Biden administration plan to provide migrants who illegally cross the southern border parole. For two years, the Biden admin has released some migrants without giving them a court date. Though the alternatives to detention through the Alternatives to Detention program, migrants without a court date are tracked and equipped to check in using a phone app. The program was designed to prevent migrants from disappearing into the shadows while they await their court dates. But get this, embedded in this article is, what the hell is happening here? Videos from the same day seem to show Biden looking very different. And mm. people have questioned two different Biden impersonators, Michael. And I'm telling you, that's what they have done. They stole the election to oppose a guy who is actually already dead. Based upon my research, Joe Biden died in 2017. He's been replaced by an actor, indeed more than one, some of which are wearing latex masks. When he was in Ireland of late, he reached back and scratched the back of his neck, and it caused the latex to bubble up. So it was conspicuous. He was wearing a mask. I've done a huge amount of this on my blog at jameshfetzer.org, and we now even have a granddaughter of Joe Biden explain her father died, her grandfather died years ago, but a family has such a history of politics, they wanted to maintain their influence, so they have others who are impersonating him, Michael. No real American, no one who cares about this country would preside over a massive influx. What we have going on here is a literal puppet, literally an actor, literally wearing a mask, Yikes. pretending to be the president of the United States. Well, basically, George Soros is acting president, and we know his devoted dream before he dies is to destroy America. Well, it is happening now it is happening now and you just mentioned that we are seeing a fake joe biden and the real joe biden died back in 2017 um that i did not know about to be honest oh yeah michael i i i've done quite a lot on this you go on my blog and you'll see how the i was calling it out already at the first debate with donald trump that it wasn't the same guy right we talked uh, about james that, woods yes. james woods the actor was noticing you know they had a different color of eye they like got a body double ears. yeah they got a different shape and size of skull i mean they're 
there are traits you can change and be the same person and traits you cannot. You can dye your hair. You right, can grow yeah. it long. You can shave it off. You're still the same guy, but you can't have a different shape and size of skull, which is the case with these people. Right. And as a and as a granddaughter said, they just want to keep their hand into politics. And of course, now we're getting out of the Senate, uh, House Oversight Committee just massive documentation of the Biden crime family. Oh yes. Where they they've used twenty five different shell companies, Michael. I mean, the degree the the magnitude of this operation, this criminal enterprise, is staggering. It goes it goes way deep, and yes, a lot of a lot of the Biden family were heavily rewarded for, I guess, their hard um, work. <laughs> um, of, of course, I'm saying that sarcastically here, but yes, they have um, inherited quite the bit of cash. Oh yes, absolutely, 100% staggering amounts of money. And of course, there was a whole lot going on in Ukraine where Joe even boasted at the Council on Foreign Relations how he'd force the Ukrainian government to fire the prosecutor looking into Burisma, where Hunter had a cushy job on the board of directors, for which he was being handsomely paid, even though he knew nothing about yeah. gas or oil. No I mean, experience. You know, it goes on and on and on, Michael. It's I, just I, enough right. to gag. Absolutely, and it makes you wonder, how the hell did that even happen? Who let this happen? Well, look, the Democrat Party knows damn well this is not the real Joe Biden. And you, everyone in position to power and influence at the highest level of the Democratic Party is aware. I recently played video of the real Joe Biden from 2008. Now, the real Joe Biden was very expressive in his face. He was very articulate with his hands and arms. I do that myself, Michael. So when I see someone like the real Joe Biden, using his hands and arms and expression as he talks, it resonates with me. This guy they got now is like a mummified version of Joe Biden. No expression, no hands or arm uh, gestures. Right. He's clearly about 20 IQ points below the real Joe Biden. And a different signature, different manner of interacting with Jill. I mean, the evidence is overwhelming, and you can find a whole lot of it on my blog at jameshfetzer.org. Just do a search on Joe Biden. They, they are, uh, we do have scenes, you can look them up, uh, from, uh, from the border with a massive numbers there. I mean, they had 700,000 to a million at the border to cross when Title 42 expires, as it has now. So the invasion is taking place. Uh, look, it took me a while to figure out, you know, on the one hand, why in the world would the NIH, for example, or the EPA be stockpiling weapons? And obviously, since they're not law enforcement or defense department related agencies, it has to be for some other improper purpose. Right. And I'm telling you, they've stockpiled caches of arms for these migrants coming across. And it, you, know, you, know, you gotta look at n not the families, you gotta look at all these young single men who are very physically fit. And who I believe some of them have already been trained by US forces in Latin and South America, and they're bringing them in as an army to attack Americans. There's nowhere for them to go, Michael. Think about it this way. You can't just bring in 10 million people into a country which does not have an excess of 10 million homes. Right, this so is why I'm I... Convinced, yeah. I'm convinced one of the motivators is they're telling them, come here and you can have your own home, and they're gonna achieve their own home by coming into our neighborhoods and killing us and taking our homes if we can't do something to stop it. They're using chaos just as cover because right. I mean this is all plotted. Exactly. You can't yes. have them acquiring these billions of weapons in advance and bringing all these migrants across, you know, as a potential army without prior planning. And in fact, there turns out to be a a UN and DHS orchestrated camp in Panama that is bringing in these mass caravans into the United States. I mean, it's all deliberate. And you got this one great traitor, uh, uh, Mayorkas, who's the Secretary of Homeland Security, telling us the borders are secure, there is no problem, the mm. border is not open. I mean, you know, the, these are desperate tactics, Michael, but what I'm doing, you know, my seeking to do is sound the alarm. If you put together the housing issue with the arms caches, 
with these guys coming across the border and the fact that they're being given cell phones. See, that that's what they need to coordinate the whole thing, to tell them where to go, how to organize, coordinate, to pick up the weapons, and then to undertake military operations in the United States. In my opinion, this is in the works. Oh, yes, this was all premeditated. And, of course, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of migrants from Central America coming in Joe Biden had warned a chaotic period is ahead of the U.S. Yeah, but that's just, you know, those are just words. I mean, it's, not, it's going to appear to be chaotic, but why should there be chaos? Let, let me tell you how simple it is and how absurd is our migration policy in Mexico. If you want to immigrate to Mexico, you have to satisfy at least the following two conditions. Number one, you have to show that you have something to contribute to the good of Mexico. That would be like you were a dentist or a lawyer or a carpenter or an electrician. You have to be able to show you have something to contribute to the good of Mexico. Number two, you have to be able to prove you have the financial resources system for yourself and your family so you don't become a burden to the Mexican government. If the United States were to simply implement those two conditions, we would have a resolution of the problem. We, of course, obviously should finish the wall Trump had all of this under control, and that's part and parcel why they had to get rid of Donald Trump. They had to dump Trump, Trump to de destroy America, and they're well on their way, Michael. Absolutely. I think that's what's happening right now, as you mentioned, and, uh, you know, I'm out here in a border town. Uh, not very far away from the Mexican border, just a couple towns away, Jim. And um, it's a real problem. It's a very real problem that's going on. Violent folks coming across, uh, Jim. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think Venezuela emptied its prisons to get them all out, sent them to, sent them to the United States. I mean, you know, this, this is all grotesque. And no responsible president of the United States would put up with this for five minutes, much less all this period of time, where they're actually promoting the whole shebang. And, and this, I think, is a reason they're so upset with Trump and they're so, they so much want to get rid of our weapons is because we know the Founding Fathers were very far-sighted, Michael. The Founding Fathers wanted every American to be a citizen soldier. There are some on the left who argued they didn't anticipate Americans having military-style weapons, but on the contrary, they wanted Americans to have military weapons, the muskets of their time, so they could rise to the defense of the nation, either against a tyrannical government or against a foreign invasion. Now, they've been very, very clever in their efforts to take away AR-15s, especially because it's the most versatile all-around weapon you could have. Uh, uh, even though it's a minuscule percentage of crimes that are committed using rifles, only 5% of all gun violence and murders happens with rifles. And within the rifle category, it's a smaller percentage with AR-15s, just a tiny handful. But they make up these cases. That's why they're staging these events like Sandy Hook and Parkland and even uh, Las Vegas and right. Buffalo. And uh, 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 believe me. I have continued my collaborative research on all these events. I bring together groups of experts to sort out what really happened. And I guarantee 100%. Buffalo, Uvalde, Nashville, totally fake, totally fake, totally fake. This latest one in Allen, Texas, appears again to be totally fake. Now, it gets a very uh, intricate in getting into all the details. But let me just tell you at Nashville how blatant it was. When the, when the alleged perp, supposed to be this woman who has gone transgender and thinks she's a man, yeah. drives into the parking lot, the parking lot is virtually empty. There's practically no vehicles there, which is inconsistent with it being a school day, but is consistent with it being a Saturday or a holiday. Then when he shoots his way into the building, sets off alarms, there's no scattering of, of students or teachers or secretaries or custodians. The building is basically empty. And then when you look at the footage of the shooter there, he's wearing black and white sneakers and he has a normal sized neck, whereas the woman who's supposed to be the shooter has a long neck. And get this, when they take him out and they send in a, squat te squat, uh, a SWAT team, and, and once again, 
There's not a soul to be seen. They go into all kinds of doorways, down hallways. You don't see a single soul alive. Then you hear shots, really simulated shots, and a body. And the body, even in my opinion, appears to be a mannequin. But the key point is different type of sneaker, different brand. And now it's red and colored versus the black and white. You know, they really blew it in Nashville, Michael. The evidence is just stunning, overwhelming, just oh, yes. embarrassingly bad. Mass shootings are on the rise. Already there's been 200 mass shootings across the U.S. so far, according to the statistics here. And, um, yes, you mentioned the most recent one, and you're saying it was completely, um, it was a facade is what you're saying. The, the, the Nashville was totally fake, totally fake. And Uvalde was based upon Sandy Hook, where we're supposed to have the shooter, Adam Lanza, kill his mom and then go to school and shoot 20 first graders and six adults. Well, in Uvalde, they had the imaginative variation of him shooting his grandmother and then going to the school and shooting 19 second, third, and fourth graders and two teachers, one of whom was a crisis actor reprising her role from Sandy Hook which is Vicky Soto. I mean, she got $210,000 to reprise her role. And by the way, I have contacts now, you know, among those who participated in the fakery in Newtown. And they are observing that some of the crisis actors in Nashville were actually trained in Connecticut, and they've jacked the ante up to 310000 No wonder so many are so eager to get their faces in front of the camera so they can collect a big fat paycheck, Michael. It's no surprise to, to hear such a thing going on. Jim, there's been all these uh, shootings going on. It, it makes you wonder, are these organic shootings or are they a product of our own state-sponsored terrorism? Are yeah. Alphabet Boys at it again? Yes, yes, yes. Faux terrorism. That's exactly right. Now, acts of terrorism are designed to instill fear into a target population to make it more amenable to manipulation to promote a political agenda. So even if these are staged events, false, fake, faux terrorism, they are acts of terrorism nonetheless. Right. Because reported as real, and parents across the country were just traumatized by the report from Sandy Hook. It was very cleverly designed. They had social psychologists, consultants as to how to make it most effective and horrific for parents across America, such that the mayor of Boston actually went on a program called Greater Boston, which was hosted at the time by Andy Rooney's daughter. This is just weeks before Sandy Hook. And he was boasting how he was a friend of the then Vice President Joe Biden, and how Joe had confided in him that gun control would be a done deal by January of 2013. And Andy Rooney's daughter was just Stunned. She said, what could possibly happen for legislation to pass so fast? And while the mayor wouldn't admit what it was, obviously, Joe had confided in him about Sandy Hook, that they're going to have a state shooting of a bunch of children, and it was going to be so horrific for the country, they'd be able to move forward with very aggressive gun control. Well, the problem the Democrats have now, and they're all in on this gun control business, is once they had the not just a summer of love with all the riots and the looting and the arson, but the idea of defunding the police. Americans have recognized they cannot count on the police to defend them. And if they cannot defend themselves, they're in deep doo-doo. So Americans have gone out and bought guns, and every time they stage one more of these phony events, they buy more guns. This, in my opinion, may be what ultimately can save the republic, because there are enough armed American citizen soldiers to come to the defense of the nation against this invasion by migrants being orchestrated. I cannot emphasize this strongly enough, being orchestrated by the Biden administration. Oh, yes, under the guise of NGOs, non-governmental um, organizations, you know, they claim they have no government ties, but that's just a bit of another facade where they're getting funds to do these things all coming from uh, government and uh, corporations and that's one thing that we have to completely remember is that corporations dictate every aspect of life in america 
and uh, we're seeing all that come to fruition here in 2023. I, I am convinced, Michael, that had Hillary been elected, the events that are transpiring now would have come to pass years before that Donald Trump upset the apple cart. Right. That he got so much support from rural communities where they were unable to control the vote that he won the election, even though it was rigged for Hillary. I did a huge amount of reporting at the time, and it was clearly rigged for Hillary. And because Trump was an America first guy because Trump clamped down on the border because he brought illegal migration down to a trickle because he made us energy independent because the lowest wage earners were seeing their wages rise at the highest rate because he created a surging economy. They had to figure out a way to marginalize him to get Trump out of the way. And they've gone all out. You had a Russia Gate initially. You've had two impeachment. You had right. the January 6th. You've had this most recent absurd rape trial. Yeah. And, and Michael, let me let me the tell you how, how ridiculous the situation is. It's pretty sad. This woman, E. e. Jane Carroll, who claims she was raped by Donald Trump in either 1995 or 96, she can't even remember the year in which this rape allegedly took place. I defy you to find a single woman who's ever been raped who can't tell you not just the year, but the month and the day and the hour and the minute it occurred. But she can remember none of the above. It, and it appears that she was inspired by an episode of uh, a law and order oh, sexual no. victims unit uh, seven <laughs> years earlier true? about a rape in the same department store in the same lingerie section, Michael. Oh, I mean, this God. is so bad. That I didn't know. That is... Pretty sad if true. Yeah. That's not good. And um, she's claiming that, uh, yeah, Trump raped her. Yes, we saw that. And um, he has lost that. And now he has to pay uh, quite a bit of money all over again. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be overturned on appeal. There's no way. This should never have been allowed in the court. I mean, just consider, since she can't even tell you when it actually happened, how can he defend himself by explaining he had an alibi? He might have been in Europe. He might have been playing golf in Scotland. Who knows? And she wants He's to not sue him. Able to, he can't marshal right. a defense because he doesn't know what crime specifically he's been accused of committing. And now she wants to sue him again over the deposition uh, video. Yeah, it's all nonsense. <laughs> it's all nonsense, Ooh. Michael. And unfortunately, sad to say... It's another indication that America has become a banana republic. You know, right. what has distinguished us in the past among other nations is the objective application of the law, the idea of equal justice under law, uh, where, you know, you're going to be treated the same rich, poor, you know, Democrat, Republican, black, white, blah, blah, blah. All of that has gone by the board. There's no possible way this was even a legal procedure. This judge simply allowed it to happen. He let other I I evidence come in that should never have been admitted. The whole thing was a charade. It, it wasn't a real legitimate court case. And I'm sorry to say, based upon my own experience in relation to a lawsuit against me, for a, an alleged defamation in relation to a death certificate where, uh, and now I'm only explaining the lawsuit because I'm under a permanent injunction not to repeat the sentences for which I was sued uh, because I declared a, a death certificate of one of the decedents to be fake which had to be the case if the, if the book that I edited, Nobody Died at Sandy Hook, were true. If Nobody Died at Sandy Hook were true, if it were a FEMA drill, and we even had the FEMA manual, we even had the FBI Consolidated Crime Report for 2012 showing the number of, of, of murders or non-negligent manslaughters in Newtown that year to be zero, or since Sandy Hook is a subdivision of Newtown, that meant there were zero murders and non-negligent homicides. If, if all that evidence, which the court in Wisconsin was able to simply set aside as though it were irrelevant, as preposterous as that sounds, and I took this case all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, I can tell you, the judicial system in America is totally lost. I mean, it's just a wreck. It's been completely politicized. Michael, just offer one illustration. I even had two forensic document experts supporting me 
by their records that there were four different versions of the death certificate in evidence at that point, and they concluded, both of them, that all four copies of the death certificate were fake, all four of them. And yet the judge just set them aside as not helpful and went ahead and ruled in favor of the plaintiff, one of the purported grieving Sandy Hook parents. But, I mean, this whole thing is just ridiculous. And now I have even more evidence before I went to the, when I went to the Supreme Court and they initially denied my request for a writ of certiori, I submitted a petition for reconsideration where I included new evidence acquired in the meanwhile, including from the Connecticut FEMA uh, office, their agenda showing this drill at Sandy Hook was on the agenda for 14 December 2012, right there with other drills, right there. They even published a map to show how to get from their headquarters in Bridgeport, Connecticut, down to uh, uh, Dickinson Drive, where the school was located. I mean, I had that, plus I had a, a, a excellent private investigator by the name of Brian Davidson out of Texas who got into the Connecticut State files and turned up one photograph after another that it contradicted the official narrative in a hallway where you're supposed to see the body of the principal, Don Hofspring, and the psychologist, Mary Sherlock, in pools of blood. There are not only no bodies, but no pools of blood inside a classroom where you're supposed to see bodies of little kids all over the place. Not only no bodies, no blood, no student desk or chair, no teacher desk or chair. In other words, what he discovered was not only evidence it had not been a mass murder, but that it wasn't even an operating school which is what I'd been contending from the beginning. And yet the Supreme Court declined to hear my case. I'm telling you, talk about disillusionment setting in, Michael. I have been there, done that. And I can tell you, the situation ain't good. Oh, no, that's uh, terrible news, uh, Jim. The fact that they won't even uh, listen or uh, look at any of the evidence that you have presented they just uh, dismiss it right away. I, I think that's uh, unfair and unjust. Well, of course, I couldn't agree more, but there it is. There it is, though. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm back in court in Wisconsin because they improperly took the book. You know, the whole idea really yeah. was to shut down the book. But the curveball I threw them was when Amazon banned the book uh, less than a month after it had gone on sale, even though it had sold nearly 500 copies already. I right. released it for free as a PDF. They had not anticipated I would do something like <laughs> yeah. that. They didn't like that at all. That's uh, hilarious, Jim. But that's the, the proper thing to do. And uh, hopefully hopefully the tables turn on them, Jim, in your case. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I was just called, by the way, for the, the show I have to do oh, after yes, that's this, right. Michael. And I, uh, listen, I'm just ecstatic for us to be reconnected today. And I want us to stay in contact. You are a sensational host. I really love doing shows with you. And I'm so glad we could connect on this occasion because what we're talking about today is of the greatest importance. I say, Michael, this is equivalent to the U.S. being at DEFCON 1. My goodness. Everyone needs to understand what's going on here. If you don't have weapons, if you don't know how to use them, you want to obtain and learn to use them, stock up on ammunition, I'm telling you. The next thing you know, maybe hordes of migrants pouring into your neighborhood. That is part of the plan. We don't have 10 million excess homes for all these migrants, and they're wanting to bring in 100 million. This is a displacement of American citizens by migrants in order to destroy the United States. And the plan is being carried out today as Michael and I speak. My goodness. Once again, Jim, I do want to thank you for spending a little bit of time here. And I know you got to go. Um, and that's uh, jameshfetzer.org. Go there. And uh, once again, Jim, thank you so much for being a part of the program. We'll do it again on the other side, my friend. You got it, Michael. I look forward to that occasion. Thanks so much. Got it. Take care, Jim. Thank you. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was a quick update with our friend, Mr. James Fetzer. It's been a while. Glad he uh, came back here. I know he has to go do another show. The man is busy, super busy. And while all this is going on, we have our president saying this. Stand up against the poison 
of white supremacy as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. Whoa, that feedback. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm at a black HBCU. I say it wherever I go. Once again, boys and girls, I do want to thank you for pressing play on this very short little update here for you. I know you wanted more, but Jim is a man of limited time, and the, the man does like 25 shows a day. It's pretty wild. It is pretty wild. I've never seen anyone any busier than our friend Jim, the freight train Fetzer. Much love and respect to all of you out there, boys and girls. Thank you for hanging out with us here tonight. Oh, yes, there's so much more to talk about here tonight. But yes, we were here for a short time, not a long time. This was a short segment just for you. And with that said, boys and girls, stay safe no matter where you are on this island earth. I'm Michael Deacon, and with that said, the world is a mysterious place. And life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night.